I really like to sew, but I'm not patient enough to spend months on a project. Quite by accident, I started to design a quilt with columns instead of blocks. Then my mind began to spin with ideas. Welcome to the third program of Quick Column Quilts. The wind chimes hanging from our deck served as the inspiration for this quilt by the same name. Just like the real wind chimes, the angled accent pieces seem to move as if gently nudged by the wind. Quick Column Quilts, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The colorful accent pieces of the wind chime quilt were found mainly in my fabric stash. I started with this fabric. This is all I have left at this point. Uh, a print that had, or a stripe, that had many different colors in it that allowed me to choose other colors from my stash to include in this quilt. And as we go to the quilt, you can see the big stripe piece and how when I was auditioning fabrics, I chose geometric prints that had kind of a modern feel because this is the way this stripe works. And you can see how I came to choose some of these fabrics, honestly. I had other fabrics that I was working with, but they just didn't look right after I cut them out. So it's, this is a very visual process. A hint I have for working with dark colors, intensely dark colors, for example, this polka dot with a black background, I like those in smaller portions. I think they have more pop to the quilt when they're not in big, strong elements. And the larger pieces, are with have a lot of white background or have some air with them. The background fabric I ended up purchasing and used obviously the aqua or turquoise color and the columns are this. They they have a wind chime column next to a narrow column and this is here's the wind chime column and it has the background fabric in it and then there's a solid strip of just the background fabric giving these chimes the floating effect. That's why I called it wind chimes. There are three sizes of crosswise strips of fabric that I cut, two and a half, three and a half, excuse me, two and a half, four and a half, and six and a half. So I've cut many strips throughout this program, so being the last program, I'm not cutting the other two. And if you miss the first two programs of this series, you can always watch them online at nancyzeman.com or on a DVD. So here are the crosswise strips, and then you're going to be cutting a lot of background strips the same size, two and a half, four and a half, and six and a half. We're going to angle cut these, but before angle cutting, we're going to sew each strip into a tube. And here you can see I've met right sides together, and then with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, just chain stitched the fabrics in the tube, and you do the same with your accent pieces and clip the threads between the tubes. This tube has been turned right side out and we're going to do the angle cutting. Now you may wonder why I'm sewing it into a tube and then cutting it apart. Why not just cut the ends? Well, I found that I was wasting a lot of fabric. For example, if you would just cut off the angle, you'd be wasting well, here, here we, this is how it would be. You'd be wasting quite a bit of fabric. And I was using scraps, so I needed every morsel that I could handle. So I'll show you what I did for these. And, you know, truth be told, I don't sew all these things. My staff and I work together on this, but I say I because it's the collective I. <laughs> so here we have the right side of the fabric that's rolling down my table. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. And just a single layer, you're going to cut it first. And... Um, along the 45 degree angle, I have some tape so I can see that line right away and just indiscriminately in the middle of it, just cut the 45 degree angle. So it's now cut open. 
And then you're going to make this into two pieces. It can be approximately a third, two thirds, a half. It doesn't matter. Just cut another angle and try to have the angles go all in the same direction. That will make it easier to lay out your quilt and plan. So you're going to be cutting all these pieces in many different sections. You just don't want them even and keep cutting away. So after you've cut the pieces for the accents, the background pieces you're going to cut in the same manner, then do some laying out of your fabric. And let me just stack all my samples away. And here we have some pieces. And I have this um, three column sizes. Here's the two and a half. And between each of the accent pieces, I have placed a solid color. So let's move this up a little bit. And then, let's see, let's try, if you didn't like one of these colors, we can replace them. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Here's a four and a half, and this piece, and so now I would put a four and a half at this, at the top, and I'm going to overlap them just to conserve some space. And then, here we go for the wider piece. And you just lay it out, see if you like the color combination. You're going to be changing as you go along. Meet right sides together of your pieces after you've come up with an arrangement that you like and overlap the pieces by a fourth of an inch. And my little gauge is here, so you overlap so you have that little extension by a fourth of an inch. And make sure that it's just one fourth of an inch. And you're going to pin your whole column together. Here's a close up of just stitching that fourth of an inch seam allowance. And you do that time and time again until you have your whole column stitched. Then you lay out your pieces. And between the pieces, you're going to be placing a solid two and a half inch strip. We, when we were making these, we did tossing and turnings, flipping around to make sure we had the right arrangement. It's going to take you some time to get that arrangement correct, but then you sew your columns together. You'll have to straighten out the top and the bottom, but it's a fast way of making a quilt. You can use some of your extra pieces on the back of the quilt to make the quilt batting. Make it scrappy. It's a fun way of working with quick column quilts. So that's a brief review of the wind chime quilt. No half square triangles are needed to make these artistic flying geese. Start with squares, fold three times, and presto, 3D folded triangles. You can create the dimensional geese and change the size and direction with ease. I'd like to show you how. So our flying geese wall hanging is made with batik fabrics, a batik background, and the columns, I think by now you can kind of see how the columns are going down in various sizes. From a very narrow two and a half inch column, it started out two and a half inches, now it ends up two inches, to up to six inches. And then every size in between, two, four, two, three, four, five, and six widths. This is a very artistic way of quilting. There are no wrong or right ways of doing it, but some suggestions. The background strips are cut first, and you can determine the size that you'd like, but cut it longer than you'd need because there are going to be some folding and stitching that will take up some length. Here we have a couple of examples of four and a half, six and a half, three and a half, and five and a half, and this kind of mimics a little bit the left side of the quilt that's behind me shows a little bit like this with just a little coloration change. So you're going to cut the background sti strips with the half inch widths, so in, in other words, four and a half, five and a half. You get, the, you get the picture. Now the dimensional geese are made with squares, but rather cutting them the same size as the background, they're going to be cut a half of an inch smaller. So for a four and a half inch strip, all your squares would be cut four inches. Here they'd be cut six three, and of course, in this instance, five. The fabric is going to be folded in half, meeting the wrong sides. And now I'm just going to finger press this, and then fold the centers to the middle. And now I'll get really press this, but I'll just 
finger press right now and then take it to the ironing surface and do the final pressing. So that was three presses, as I mentioned earlier. That's what it would take to create the triangles. Perfect project for someone who has never made triangles before because if you can fold and press, you can make triangles. So here you go. Here's, here's the triangle made. So you're going to make a lot of flying geese. On the background strip, it's now time to mark placement. Now, if you'd like to copy the quilt that's behind me exactly, it's in the book that accompanies today's program and gives all the dimensions, but yet you can make it any dimension, size, spacing that you'd like. The keys are to mark horizontal lines, making certain that they're square with the fabric, and there has to be distance between the points at least a half of an inch and you can make it much greater than that. You can have you know space close together, far apart, staggered, the choice is yours. Then after you have positioned them and centered the geese in the middle then meet right sides together, align the edges and place a pin. And you want to make sure you're snug around that fold because that fold is going to enclose the raw edges of the square. And here I'm stitching just a fourth of an inch seam along the edge and you keep doing this down the edge. Now when we go to this narrower three and a half inch width I'd like to show you that after taking up a seam of a fourth of an inch or half of an inch each time notice how much it shrinks. So that's why you have to cut this seam longer, or this strip, excuse me, longer. And then I'm going to press this the way that I'd like my geese to be flying. Now you could have them fly either way. Now's the time to decide which way you're going to have them fly. After you get all of your columns stitched, you're going to meet right sides together and sew the, the vertical seam. We had this professionally stitched or long arm quilting that the stitching with between the spaces picked up some of the designs from the boutique. It had a kind of a flight design. I mean, the, they have many interesting designs that you can place in here. You have the option to add a nice narrow little border, inner border and then an outer border. I like the lighter outer border, just gives it some air, you're not closing in. And since these are flying geese, you can see what a pretty design this has. So up or down, make sure that you stitch down the middle of the triangles to hold the points in place and place in your home in a place where the, you can enjoy it. This double-sized quilt may look difficult to make, but not so. The darker squares float on the light background of the quilt top, made with some creative cutting and sewing of crosswise strips. Not to worry, you will not be required to cut squares and piece with rectangles. I've opted for a quick way of making a column quilt. When I looked at this quilt, I, th I thought, I don't think in all my years of sewing and quilting I've made a quilt with white background before, but it's quite brilliant. The royal blue squares really pop out, and if you followed throughout this three-part series, you know that the columns just follow all along down with a two-inch square and then a solid white strip, a four-and-a-half-inch square with a different spacing between, the blocks than the two inch, then another spacing square or narrow strip, and then these happen to be six inch squares. And I've scattered them in different heights, in different positions. There's really nothing perfectly symmetrical about this. It's the floating square quilt. I like it, it's fresh. And if you're wondering how we're gonna get these squares in the middle of the rectangles are going to make stratas. And a strata is a term used to stitch two or more crosswise strips together. We'll start with a two inch block. We're going to start really with a two and a half inch crosswise strip. So whatever color you'd like for your floating squares, this is 42 or 41 to 42 inches of the crosswise fabric cut two and a half inches wide. And then for this particular background, I cut 12 and a half of the white background. Now, I, I charted this out on a piece of graph paper. You can make it any size you'd like.
just use this concept. So two and a half, twelve and a half. And they're going to be sewn together, right sides together along the edges, and you'll see that piece in a minute. For the four and a half inch size, the block or the strip was cut four and a half inches of the royal blue. I used eight and a half inches and I have my little numbers written on here so I could remember. So four and a half with an eight and a half. Then the larger blocks, this is a six and a half inch and a ten and a half inch background strip. All three stratas are sewn in the same manner, right sides together, fourth of an inch seam, and then you press the seams toward the darker fabric, which in this case, of course, is the royal blue. And then we're going to do some cutting, cutting of strips. And I have smaller stratas to show you, but here we go. This is the two and a half with the 12 and a half inch white background. I have the edges straight and square. We'll overlap the two together. For cutting the strips or subcutting the subcutting them, whatever size you cut the floating block, in this instance two and a half, that's what you're going to subcut this long length. So I'll get my ruler lined up at two and a half on the mat as well as with the fabric. Make sure we got it straight, and then subcut. When you're working with the four inch, four and a half inch, excuse me. You'd fold it right sides together and cut four and a half inch strips. And the same principles apply when you're working with the six and a half inch blue strip. You'd cut six and a half inch subcuts. And now we're going to create the floating columns. And as soon as I lay this out, you'll get it if you haven't figured it out already. If we place these end to end, you can see how this would be sewn together, how the columns come to be. And when I sew these together, I usually do it in pairs. I meet opposite color ends together, and then this would be the same way, opposite color ends together. And if you had them lined up, you could chain stitch together, open up, and then put these two together again. So you're just making one long two and a half inch strip, one long column that you can see right in this area. Do the same thing with all colors, not all colors, all sizes, four and a half and six and a half. And then do the layout. And I have the layout ready. And here's where you're going to maybe get a quilting buddy to come over and ask him or her to help you lay this out. It's kind of fun to you, do some adjusting. There's no right or wrong answer here. Here's the the larger six and a half, and I'm going to place down a two and a half, and then a four and a half. Between the columns, I have been consistent and cut just white strips that are four and a half inches. Now you don't want the, the blocks necessarily to line up exactly across from each other. Sometimes we found that we flipped the columns. You can adjust these. You'll have to straighten out the end. It, it, you'll be having a little waste of the fabric, but you could, well, I guess we need a column in here. I guess that would help. And get, generally lay it out and see what you have and see if you like it. And then just sew these long columns together. And pretty simple. Just by making the stratas, cutting the stratas the same width as you cut the predominant floating square, sewing those subcuts together end to end, and presto, this is the layout. Make it sporadic, make it linear, the choice is yours, whatever you'd like. I chose not to put a border around it, just to have it be open and free, a little bit more of a modern look, but I'd like to try it next in a different color combination or even in a print. It would make a total change, but you'd use the same technique. A floating column quilt, I hope you'll give it a try. Do you ever feel inspired by a challenge? Well, if so, you can take a quilting challenge online. Here to tell us about it is Kim Lopasek. Kim is with Project Quilting. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy Kim. Thank you for having me. 
Now, you, this is your brainchild, uh, Project Quilting Online, and give our viewers a review of how that happened. Okay, well, it was in 2010. Um, I was hanging out with my husband and my brother, and I had recently discovered Project Runway, mm -hmm. and I just loved it. I got it on, um, I watched se or episode after episode, and I wanted to learn how to sew clothing. And then I realized, I really don't have time for another project. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, but I do know how to quilt, uh -huh. so why not start Project Quilting? So I gave my mother-in-law a call, Diane Lepasek, um, and I was asked her if she would do challenges if I would run it on my blog. And she agreed, and that's how Project Quilting began. And that's quite a few years ago, and you choose interesting topics for each week of challenge. Yep, yep. Um, Diane actually does the brainstorming. Um, I try not to know much about the challenge beforehand. Uh. I get about a day notice so I can get the blog ready. Um, but I like to be as uninformed as the rest of my the people I'm challenging. Uh, so I don't have any uh, advantage when I'm trying to make the quilt. Now these are not necessarily bed quilts. No. They, they can be small, anything that is physically quilted. Quilted or it could just patchwork is one of our options. Like we've had uh -huh. people make skirts. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it, the, big, the big challenge about project quilting too is you only have a week to do the challenge. Aha. Uh -huh. Now a week is not very long and but yet what great things. This was, this challenge was entitled, tell our viewers. Uh, my favorite color. So here's a cute table runner. So you could pick one color and white you oh. could put together in the quilt. Um, oh. And there could be different shades of that color. So this one was done by my mother-in-law, Diane. Um, I did challenge her because she's been doing the challenges for so many <laughs> years, giving the challenges, but she never actually had a complete one oh. herself. Oh. This was the first one she tried to fit in. And of course, she was at a conference that week. There was a ton of challenges in her life outside of the quilt she had to finish. And here's a quilted piece, but a this, yeah, This is the pillow. Um, I made this one, and that one I, I didn't have a lot of time either that week, so I knew I needed to keep it simple. Um, that's one of the things you look at your week and you decide how much time do I have to work on this piece. Now, we don't have lots of samples here because these are the entrants are from online. They're online, so there is no boundary on who can participate. Um, mm -hmm. We actually have had participants from 38 different states, four provinces, and seven other countries. So this has gone worldwide. Well, it's, it's quite exciting. Now, I, we would like to show a couple of other challenge topics. One is architecture. Architecture. Um, that was the first challenge in season three. It was one of my favorite challenges of all of Project Quilting. The pieces people came up with were just inspiring because um, architectural's got so many different mm -hmm. uh, shapes and patterns in it that you could really do a lot of different things. And you were inspired by this photo. Yep. Um, bare bones of a barn. Yep. Actually, the challenge came out and I thought in my head, I'm like, oh my goodness, there is a barn down the road that's getting taken down. Oh. Honey, watch the children. I have to go take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so grateful I did that day too because by the next day the barn was down. Oh. So I really lucked out and got it. And I heard to hear the barn move somewhere else. So it's oh, not that, like it's gone. That, that's gone. great. And here's the image. The, yep. the, your interpretation of that inspiration. Yes, it was. And I, I really just try to loosely look at the picture and then use what I saw and create something. Then the challenge that you have next we'd like to show you is from a fabric pack. Yep. We have two examples. Yep, we were given a, a pack of fabric and we had to do uh, the same quilt block in three different sizes, so it's tradition times three. Um, and you can see how these mm -hmm. two quilts, they're the same fabrics but completely different quilts. And you mentioned you have a week, the challenge is a week long. Yes. Um, the fabric pa um, pack one was more okay. than a week though. But most of them are week most long. Most of them are, yes. So explain how the voting takes place and the okay. entrance. So the challenges all go up at Sunday at noon, at noon um, my time, which is Wisconsin time. Central time. Central mm -hmm. time, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> and you have until noon the next week to finish the challenge. So you have seven days. I do like to do countdowns so you're aware. Uh -huh. And it sort of helps too if you have some time um, time zone issues. I try to hint like how much longer there is going sure. on. Um, you get a week, then we have a week break because everybody needs to breathe again and sure. actually maybe do some dishes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the laundry. Well, well, isn't that fun? This yeah. is a fun thing, Kim, and thank you for being with us. I'm I'm inspired to <laughs> maybe do that in. Who knows when? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I would love it. Okay, well, come back and tell us more about it sometime. Anytime. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. 
If you'd like to learn more about project quilting, you can go to, go to nancyzeman.com where you'll find all things sewing with Nancy and you click on Nancy's corner and you'll be able to find project quilting and find out how you can participate in Diane and Kim's great program. Well, this wraps up the three-part series on quick quilting, or quick column quilts, excuse me, quick column quilts. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed that and maybe do that in a challenge. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy Zeman has written a book entitled Quick Column Quilts that includes instructions for 13 quilted projects and all the techniques featured in this three-part series. It's $18.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2804. Order item number U8743, Quick Column Quilts. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.